What up guys? After yesterday's little outing, I have decided to, to fix a couple little things I noticed that need tweaking or buttoning up that I never got around to doing. So I figured I might just do those today. It's not going to be a real great video, but um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, for whatever reason, I tried the uh, bump box on here and it isn't working. The trans brake is working, the two step, all that is working, but for whatever reason, the bump box isn't. So we're gonna have to explore a little bit on why that is. And the other thing I noticed in the video that my fire blockage back there, the uh, this sheet of metal is super, super rattly and it's super annoying. So I think I'm gonna take it off and try and put some maybe rubber grommets uh, where the screws are underneath to kind of help isolate it from just metal on metal contact. So there's that, there's that. I noticed my seat is really, it's not loose or anything, it's bolted to the floor. And this is a fully fixed back metal kirky, but it's, you know, it's, it's pretty wobbly. So I'm gonna build a gusset or a brace, I guess you could call it from the cage, just the bolts to the back of the seat. That should stiffen it up really good. The other thing that was some ghetto rig stuff that I never finished was the actual bump box button here. This little ribbon cord is needs to be tied up to where it won't get wrapped in the steering wheel. And it's just got butt connectors on there for now. I need to like solder and shrink that up and fix, make it look good and everything. So that's what we're going to be working on today. A couple other maybe little things in the engine bay. But uh, other than that, just trying to get everything ready for when uh, we go to the track and they look over the car to get everything sorted and inspected for the year. So I can get the little track cert sticker and uh, we'll be ready to run as soon as the track's open. I have had a lot of people comment or ask me what brand this hood is. And it was made by a guy, I believe his name is David Ball. You can look him up on Facebook or he used to, now I don't know if he still does, this has been a while. I've had this thing for not quite a year, but uh, he was selling them on eBay. He did, he did do arrow front end. This is, I don't think, I think he only did Fox body stuff, but uh, he did do four eye front ends or the Arrow 8793 up, obviously. And uh, this is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I don't know the guy from Adam, but his hood is very nice. It it, it fit really well. Uh, it was really nice quality. The gel coat was really good on it. I didn't have to trim this thing at all. It literally fit perfect right when it came off the truck. It's super lightweight, but it's not flimsy. It does have... Uh, a little bit of a brace on the inside made out of fiberglass and just overall it was a really nice hood and honestly he was the cheapest guy out there so if you're looking for a hood just uh, you might want to go check him out okay so first things first in the engine bay the only thing I really got to change is I've looked over everything it looks pretty good uh, is over the winter I changed my radiator set up to this little Honda uh, style radiator dual pass here and if you're wondering what the brand is this is actually a speed factory radiator uh, they're big time in the Honda community I believe this is for like a K24 and a Honda Civic it's like a three inch core it, it works really well anyways but uh because my radiator sits so low you want to have your uh, fill neck at the highest point of your heads and stuff up so you can get all the air bubbles out. So I've got this little CSR filler neck up here. Well, anyways, I had a, uh, if you can see that little 1 8 NPT bung on there, I had it running to a overflow bottle, which I thought I would need, but when I first fired this up, it was basically just, the the water pump was basically just 
pumping the water out that little pee hole and just filling this up and overflowing it. So what I did yesterday was I just put this little plug in there and honestly it worked perfectly fine. It didn't overheat or anything. So what I'm gonna do is just get rid of this bottle. I don't even need it. So we're gonna get rid of that. Uh, the only thing is I know some tracks, they want you to have an overflow, but on the same, on the flip side of that, there's tons of cars that don't even run radiators or ones that are smaller than that. So honestly, I don't think they're gonna give a crap or even notice. So. We're just gonna get rid of that. I don't need it. So if I don't need it, why have it on there? And it's gone, which is good because that thing was kind of a eyesore tumor there anyway. So um, the other thing, something else I noticed was I have a, uh, because this is a street car, I do have a 3G alternator on here um, with a, if you're wondering, what the alternator mount bracket is, it's kind of nice because it's low and obviously I run an electric water pump if you want to set up like that. This is just a uh, Moroso small block Ford alternator kit and you can flip the alternator, you can run it on driver's side or passenger side, it'll work with either one. It's a nice little unit, it works really well. But anyways, um, my charging cable is this little braided line here is goes to my oil pressure gauge and uh it's really close to the uh output of the alternator so you could easily arc from this copper to this line and burn it so there's not much i can do um but i'm gonna put this heat shrink over this and maybe try and tie this a little bit away but at the same time i don't want this line to rest on the header because that will obviously melt it as well. So just little stuff like that is stuff that keeps your car from malfunctioning at the track. There we go, all done. Heat shrinked and then I used a little zip tie, which is linked to this other tie to kind of space them apart. So much better than it was. And always remember to flush cut your zip ties, you freaking savages. Okay guys, that's pretty much anything I had to do in the engine bay. This thing's pretty much ready to rock and roll for the first rip. Uh, the only thing I might other do is uh, check the lash on the rocker arms. Um, I do run hydraulic. This is just a hydraulic lifter setup, so I really shouldn't have to check them that much. But, I mean, just a once a year check is probably a good idea. They didn't sound bad or anything, but they might have had a little noise coming, so... Just a good idea to check the check the clearances on them. I might go back and do that. But uh, other than that, she's ready to rock and roll. Okay, guys. I'm going to try and explain my staging, bump box, two-step, launch control, all set up. Everything is all integrated with each other. It's kind of... I've got this little... This relay is part of it. It's kind of like a little super highway of wires. So what, how this works, I'll try to explain it the best I can, is this button energizes the trans brake. Okay, so that sends power from a 12 volt source. I think I have it on this little accessory switch. So I flip this switch on, that energizes this whole system. I press this button, it turns on the trans brake. When I do that, it goes to this relay and this relay controls a gr the ground side of the relay to then turn on the two-step. So on Mega Squirt, your two-step is a switch to ground. So <clears throat> you have to use a relay to control the ground side. So when I hit the trans brake, energizes the trans brake, energizes the relay, controls the ground side, turns the two-step on, and then from there, the boost leash, boost controller, that has a launch mode in it. So when you press the trans brake, it sends, I believe, um, if I'm correct, if I remember right, uh, that is a 12 volt source. So there's a wire on there that when that sees 12 volts, it goes into launch mode. And launch mode is a designated how much CO2 you're putting on top of your waste gates 
just in, when the trans brake is pressed. So that can help you build boost on top of your two steps. So you can build a shit ton of boost between the boost controller and the two step settings and just off the brake itself. <clears throat> Excuse me, off the brake itself. Now, this smooth stage bump box is also wired into all of this because what you do, how that works is when you press the trans brake, it's energized. And then when you press the little, that ribbon cable, the button on the steering wheel, what it's basically doing is just shutting off the trans brake super fast. So it's just click on, click off, click on, click off. And that allows the car to lunge forward. So for whatever reason, the lunge part, the smooth stage, is not working. The light on the box and everything is working, but uh, maybe I have this thing wired somehow incorrectly for the bump box. So I'm gonna look over the schematics real quick and uh, figure out if I went wrong or, or where. So stay tuned. Okay, I'm gonna go over the quick operation. I just, I didn't look at it real hard, but just at first glance, I'm pretty sure I did this all right when I did it the first time. So on my switch panel here, I've got accessories. So I flip that, okay? As you can tell, that powered on the box. Now I have this switch here, which isn't labeled. I turn that on, that turns on the boost controller. It also turns on the, the light for my data logger which is kind of sweet. So when I press this button, uh, the car will start data logging. That way I don't gotta have my stupid laptop in here uh, to <clears throat> actually watch the screen and whatnot. All I gotta do is just press that button, starts logging. I press it, it stops. So anyways, okay, so because I have an accessory on, I can press the trans brake. It should work, because that is powered on when the box is powered on. So I click that. You can hear the trans brake clicking outside the car. And we know that works because I tested it the other day. The trans brake was working along with the two step. And when I press this, T comes on. That means launch mode on the boost leash. I let go, off. Trans mode. Okay, so our boost control is working. Our trans brake is working. Our two step is working. So in theory, this bump box should be working. So, but, and when I press this button, I press this button, which bear with me here, it's kind of hold the, hard to hold the camera. I can hear it clicking. So, I mean, it all sounds good. It sounds like it should be working. It's kind of odd when you press this just without holding the trans brake. It... I wonder if that light comes on when I press it uh, holding the trans brake button. I've never actually looked. Yes, it does. So, I mean, just from general looking over everything, it, it should work. Maybe I didn't have the settings turned up hard enough for it to actually move. So maybe we'll back out of the garage here and just try it in the driveway.
Okay guys, I figured it out. Turns out there wasn't anything wrong at all the whole time. So I was in there playing with some settings and stuff and it just turns out that I'm gonna have to crank this on my particular trans brake, which every trans brake solenoid acts a little bit different. Uh, this one's just gonna take quite a bit more aggressive uh, adjustments. So it was working fine. The other thing I think I was doing, I was clicking it too fast. Like I think you gotta kind of click and hold for a second. But it was working perfectly fine, so now all I'll do is I'll just get this cable tied up. I probably won't film it. You guys get the idea. You just want this shit to be... You want some slack so it doesn't get all caught up in the wheel. Um, but yeah, so everything works, so good news. I guess we're ready for our first track outing. Uh, thanks for watching, and subscribe if you like this kind of content, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.